very simple. Uh, let, let me tell you. I, I mean, I'm a firm believer of bootstrapping simply because even before Open Minds, the seven different companies have started, they're all bootstrapped. I've never raised a single dollar of external funding. And here, here are some reasons why I'm so so on bootstrapping. Uh, and I really believe that bootstrapping is a process where every founder or every founder to be must go through. I, if I can put this as a standard operating procedure, right, it has to be. Everybody has to go through this bootstrapping phase simply because of few reasons. Imagine, right, if you're a founder right now and you've just started a company, maybe it's six months old and somebody just shows you $10 million. Sounds like a great idea, but two things many founders forget. The $10 million given to you is kind of like a debt. Right? I mean, nobody is going to give you money and then uh, expect you to not return a single cent. If you're 10 million, they'll probably expect 100 million in return. 10 times is a very common denominator. Second of it is that the moment you have an external funder coming in, they usually take in an exchange of shares. So they take certain form of equity and here comes certain problems. When you have equity given out, this means of additional shareholders. This means that decision making right now in the company, it's not just you and your co-founders anymore. You have external parties coming in, you have to also take into consideration their experience, their input. Yes, they may not control the company, but because they gave you money and they have shares, you also need to take care of their well-being. This means that right now, you as a founder, your focus is now divided in two parts. You have to grow the company because that's what's expected of you and that's what you want to do. But at the same time, you need to manage expectation of the shareholders. So you're already splitting your focus from the onset. That's the first reason. The second reason is that when you, are, you raise funds, I always believe that you won't stay in the same valuation for a very long time. So your 1% now or your 10% now could be very different many years in the future, which yeah. is what we want. It's a good thing, right? But if you draw a comparison for the 10% right now, you may be only raising, let's say, $100,000 or a million dollars yeah. compared to maybe in the future, your 1% could be raising a whole lot more than what you're asking for today. And I think the worst part of all is that many people get the money and don't really know where to spend or how to spend it on, right? And bootstrapping actually allows you to go through that process because you don't have money, right? So you kind of need to do uh, everything on your own, whether it's... And you're uh, spending the the pain, right? You're making sure that every penny spent is counted well. <laughs> exactly, exactly. And, and that's, although it sounds really bad, right? That you need to always count your bank account. I tell you, I've done that many times. You look, you log into a bank account, you're okay, we're counting, okay. Can we hire? Can we do this? Can we, can we not do this? It sounds like a very stressful process and it is, but through this process, you actually learn what works and what doesn't. And that's very valuable to a founder because now you know how much is needed to hire somebody for a job. Now you know how much it takes to spend or reinvest to get what kind of a result. And that, I think, is the biggest benefit of bootstrapping. Transparency is actually one of the eight values that we uphold in, in Open Minds. And the way we define transparency is actually two things, actually very simple. One is to be biased to clarity. And then number two, it's always not to make assumptions. So this means that in every conversation that we have, we always encourage people to say that, hey, you need to be biased to clarity. What this means is that you will always need to make sure that both of you are speaking within the same context, that you have already exhausted all the questions you can ask within the environment and you have already presented all that needs to be presented without withholding information. Yep. So the moment you withhold information, that is no longer clarity because you're yep. holding back information. If you're talking about transparency and the whole culture kind of penalizes, right? The moment you say something wrong, oh no, that's wrong, you know, you're stupid or you can't do this here. It's not the right way of doing it. This will naturally stifle transparency. So it's yep. very important to, to kind of put together an open environment to say, okay, let, let's talk about things. I think there's huge untapped opportunity on LinkedIn. A lot of Malaysians still use LinkedIn as a platform for job hunting or job seeking, right? Yep. Nothing wrong with that, but that also shows the immense potential for entrepreneurs to actually build your brand. I mean, at the, at the very least, it helps you appear in search engines. So I think at one point, it's great credibility, great searchability. But number two, as an entrepreneur, LinkedIn is also a great way for acquisition, right? Yeah. People use LinkedIn to acquire talents, which is one part of it, which is great. That's what we are also doing right now. But at the other hand, it's also a great way to acquire leads based yeah. on the content you post, the content you share, the people that you engage and connect with in LinkedIn. It's a great way to generate certain type of response awareness towards your brand. Yes, you may not get them converted into customer right away, but at the very least, what I found that people that are willing to connect on LinkedIn are very happy to have conversations.
I remember very clearly I was actually giving a talk uh, in Sunway University. I think there were about two, three hundred students sitting out there. And then there was this guy that came down after the event to ask a very simple question. He said, that, hey, Jen, I started off this very simple, uh, small little e-commerce shop that sells bracelets. I just started on Instagram. I only have about 100 followers. I'm struggling. How do I do marketing? I really do not know. Can you tell me how? So in that short situation, I mean, it's an event, right? I can't spend very long with the person. So I just gave very quick social media tips. You know, maybe you can do this, you can do this, you can do this. And then I moved on to the next person because the other questions to be taken. But little did I know that this, this, this guy uh, actually went back and really implemented this uh, few tips I gave and actually generated some results. So from earning a couple of tens to hundreds right now, he was earning a couple of thousand through these very simple tips. He really put his heart and soul to it. And when he, was, he achieved that, he was so excited, he kind of stalked me on Facebook, dropped me a message and to say, can, I, can we meet up again? Do you remember me? Can we meet up? I want to seek a bit more help. So very curious, right? I'm thinking, hey, this guy came back again. So I went out for coffee and was telling me, hey, I've achieved this. How can I bring it further? So this time was more intentional because it was one-on-one. So I gave him a few more tips. He went back and again, he put his heart and soul to it. The next time he contacted me for coffee, he was already earning the five figures on e-commerce. Wow. And then this process repeated about two to three times in a period of one year or one and a half years. He grew a company of just a few hundred ringgit of revenue per month to a seven-digit company one and a half years. It's insane. And this student is still a student in Sunway. I think the biggest part here, right, is the willingness to go all out to make it happen. I think it's the resilience and the dedication. To be honest, out of all the startup founders I've met, also called mentored, uh, he's probably the one that I, I really had my head off because he spent sleepless nights really trying to make it work for his business. And it's so amazing uh, and so proud of him as well to see him go through this, uh, this period of starting up.